Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 27 of my modded Factorio playthrough. This is another recreation of an old save file while I recover from the hard drive failure. In this episode, this is part one of three of my algae processing setup. Enjoy! In the previous episode, I mentioned some improvements I wanted to do on the factory before we committed to working on the bus. One of those was algae, and that is the substantially more complicated improvement. So let's do the easier improvements first. And the easy improvement is something I like to call the steam battery. It's a slightly different way of handling the inserters that fuel the boilers that power our factory. And I thought of this because I was thinking, is a burner inserter fast enough? The reason why I asked that is because something interesting happens when you process coal. Coal starts out having eight megajoules per unit of coal. But when you process it, Although you get more total energy, you also get more total items, which means each item has less energy in it. So when you process the coke, each item only has 5 megajoules compared to 8, and carbon, which has 6 megajoules, so that means that we need more inserter capacity. And sure, we could just build more burner inserters, but why not do it with electricity? The problem with electricity is that if power runs out, the burner or the inserter stop and then the power doesn't get to the boilers, it's a downhill spiral, and then you run out of power. So we need to have a separate and independent way of fueling these reactors. So the first step is to make some inserters. Why yellows? Well, if you do the quick math, each boiler consumes 3.6 megawatts per second, which is 3.6 megajoules per second in energy. And considering that each piece of carbon has 6 megajoules in it, that means we need to do 0.6 items per second into a boiler at full blast using carbon. I forget what the speed of a burner inserter is because I so rarely use them, but I don't think it's 6. I know that the yellow, I, I believe, is like 8 or 8.3 or 0.83, something like that. Definitely fast enough. So to start this setup, Let's replace all of these inserters with electric ones and get the electricity in there. Looks like I am short on motors. I'll pick up some more while we're waiting for crafting to finish. Oh, we need more wood. Forgot that I placed everything I had inside those chests. One stack ought to do fine. Alright, let's get these power poles placed. And replace all of these burner inserters with electric inserters. That alone is going to save a slight amount of electricity not using those burner inserters anymore. But the problem with this setup is, as mentioned before, if the factory starts losing power, these inserters are going to move slower. So we need to create an independent electric network to supply these that is not as sensitive to that power loss. Let's make a pump, a boiler, two steam engines for symmetry reasons, and the steam battery part of this storage tank. Let's produce some power in this area here. There we go. Put a steel pipe, our boiler. And before we place the steam engine down, we are going to put in a storage tank. This is the battery part that you can store steam inside a tank and use it as sort of a battery. And actually, I believe per unit of space, a storage tank filled with steam holds much, much more energy than a battery or an accumulator can. So it's something to keep in mind. It's not the most realistic thing, just the idea of making steam and then it just magically stays inside a storage tank until you need it. So I try to avoid using this or abusing this because it's pretty awesome and broken depending on how aggressive you are with it. But uh, let's see, we're going to need three inserters. Why three? Well, just to make sure we don't run out. <laughs> make sure we have maximum power, even though we technically really only need two. Uh, and then we need to split this off. Uh, yes, there we go. Gonna move that pole. Looks like it's already connected. No, it's not. There we go. 
And this needs to be its own network. So you gotta lay some power lines down. So you watch this thing fire itself up. Looks like we might have to jumpstart it because the pump, I believe because of AI industry, requires electricity to run. So we are going to need to prime it. Not running. Is there something I'm not doing properly? Oh, is it not an offshore pump? That looks like that's the problem. Hmm. Looks like I built the wrong kind. That's just a regular fluid pump. That would explain a few things. There we go. Now that's fired up, we can unhook that. So you see, now when we select the electric pole, we have our own independent, unique network. And this will not be as sensitive to power reductions because it's making its own power. So if the other network runs out of power, this one will be just fine. Let's put some lights in. And you can see that very slowly, these are going to fill up with steam. And then the storage tank is going to fill up with steam. So even if the coal runs out and this all stops, the steam will still be stored here, which will still power the steam engines, which will still power the inserters, even if everything com completely collapses. But to do this, we're going to need to have a unique independent network for the inserters as well. And this requires that you do some clever stuff with some power poles. So power on the factory might shut down for a moment while I set this up, but if you look at a power line, if you hold shift and left click, it gets rid of the power line. And you can string up your own custom power lines uh, by just manufacturing your own copper cables and then stringing them up. Now when you get rid of the lines, you don't get them in your inventory, they just disappear. But it's such a small thing, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If we select this and we click all of these power poles, they are now on their own networks. Looks like I need a couple more cables. So now when we string this together, and then we select it, they are on their own networks with just a few lights, the inserters, and the two water pumps. But we kind of need to connect this because right now, these top steam engines aren't connected to anything. We need to connect them to these power poles down here to go to the rest of the factory. But you see, if we place poles, it's going to become a giant mess. But if we just place them, shift left click, shift left click, then all the power lines are gone. And then we can string them up custom. And even have them cross over each other, but not share the power like that. You see how we have our 24 steam engines. All of the factory here is being powered properly. But if we select this network, you can see how very little power is being consumed, just a few inserters. And that is the steam battery. Pretty nifty, huh? That was pretty easy. Uh, there's some housekeeping to do. Specifically, we need to finish belting all of our products to the bus since technically now we have everything we need. Kind of the last holdout here is stone bricks. And I've been waiting in part just because of how far away they are and how much belt it's going to take to bring them over. But belting it'll be pretty straightforward. Looks like those boxes are still sitting there. I believe I removed them in one of the reenactments, but here they are just persisting. But now they are gone for good. I hope. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember if I got rid of them yet. But uh, now we can just uh, bust these stones over. And although it's going to be kind of a long path, we could just go straight here. But that's going to be kind of dirty. I'd much rather go the long way around to make it look clean. And it's their bricks. You know, they don't really have that much value, so it's fine to have a bunch of them just sitting on a belt not being used for anything. Oops, looks like... That was not enough. There we go. They were too far away. I would probably be clean just to go underneath here, rather than doing anything cute. That pole's finding its way to be in the way again. Okay, now this is where a little bit of decision-making happens. Where do the stones go? 
like I moved those over too far. That's okay. Uh, we're using this for the copper ingots, so let's run the stone right next to it. Right here. At this point, I think I can remove these. The stones are moving faster than I can. Gotta build faster. I could snake the belt over and have it be smushed, but I'd rather have straight belts than smushed belts, even if they're, the smushed belts are slightly smaller. So let's run these in. So the stone's going to go in right there. There they are. Uh, let's run the wood in while we're here. It was done on the next save file, so let's just get it done here. It's going to be a little odd, I think. Are we out of belts? Yes. We've got so little to go. Alright, these are going to be in the way. Alright, there goes the wood. There it goes. We've got it. We've got all ten. We've got our four principal metals. We've got our four advanced materials. And the two optional ones I put in there for efficiency's sake. Doesn't that look amazing? I'm excited to work on this further. There's one more thing for us to take care of, and that's algae processing. It's a little complicated, but it's efficient. So before we go any further, I'd like to get algae processing taken care of. Uh, but we can, however, since we are finished with the steam battery, we, we are finished with this save file. So let's load up the next one and see how we did. You can see we've got the uh, bricks set up. The belt's in a very similar position. You can see I must have done a different type of math and I decided to use red inserters instead of yellows. But see how it has a similar setup where these are on a separate network. The poles cross, but the lines do not touch. And we've got a steam battery set up here. So pretty good. I think it's time to load up the next save file. So the last process we need to set up before committing to manufacturing on our new bus is algae processing. Luckily the research is pretty easy. It's right here. No, that's brown algae. Did I already research it? Yup. Ta-da! <laughs> it got researched already. <laughs> So yeah, I must have researched it previously on the original file, but uh, it unlocks a fairly lengthy process, green algae. What does it do? A couple of things, but what we're going to do essentially is turn crushed stone into carbon dioxide. That's it. <laughs> That's all we're going to do. Right now, producing carbon dioxide through coal is somewhat inefficient because we're using coal, we're using fuel to produce fuel. However, we have a ton of crushed stone just sitting around, not getting used. Look at this. Full, like thousands, thousands and thousands. Maybe like 50,000 crushed stone? We can find a use for that. It's building up, and one of the uses of crushed stone is producing algae. So look, let's look at the chain to try to figure out this, because it's... It's convoluted. The very first step is all the way in water treatment. It, it's part of this research, but it was placed in water treatment. It's to create mineralized water. Just crushed stone mixed with water in a liquefier produces mineralized water. We can use that mineralized water plus some carbon dioxide to grow some green algae. And that green algae can be manufactured into cellulose fiber. Fibers have a couple of uses, like you could turn wood into fibers, and you could make wooden boards with fibers, but specifically, we want to use the fibers to make pellets, and then those pellets can be used to make carbon dioxide. That is the chain. <laughs> what starts as crushed stone becomes carbon dioxide. There's some other uses of green algae. Uh, one is to produce methanol gas, which is a component of plastic. But plastic is a fairly complicated process, plus we don't really need it for anything right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. 
another thing we can use those cellulose fibers for is making paste. And that paste, in addition to more cellulose fibers, is what makes wood. And sodium hydroxide is fairly easy to make, but of course we can't make it right now. And chloromethane gas is less easy to make, and we can't make that because we need to do oil mining. So those are kind of off the table. So what's the math here? It's not easy, I'll tell you that. It's complicated. I don't think I'm going to go into it because it might be a little boring. I guess comment if you want me to go into the math. But uh, the short of it is if your goal is to only produce energy, you don't care where you just want to produce the most energy possible, it is more efficient to just turn your crushed stone into wood bricks, which you can see have a fuel value of 25. That's a lot. That by using these wood pellets to create carbon dioxide, and then that carbon dioxide to make carbon, you're actually only getting about a net of 9.08, according to my math anyway, if it's anywhere close to right, 9.08 megajoules. Because you're, you're taking into account what you're losing because of what went into wood bricks, or what could have went, in, went into wood bricks, compared to coal. So coal-based carbon dioxide, which is used to make carbon, gives you a total net fuel value of 12.4, but algae-based carbon dioxide used to make carbon only has a net of 9.08. So if your only goal is to produce efficient power, stick with using coal, and then use your stone to make wood bricks. But that's not specifically what we're doing here. There is a second benefit to using stone to make carbon dioxide, and that benefit is we're not consuming coal. <laughs> it's less efficient power-wise, but we're trading the efficiency loss. We're basically saying, I'm okay with this being less efficient because the things we're going to be consuming is crushed stone, which is almost worthless to us right now, where coal is quite useful. <laughs> it powers our entire factory. We need it. We don't have solar panels yet, so coal is very valuable. Stone is much less valuable. has almost no value at all. I mean, we're just holding it. <laughs> So that's kind of the thought process, the thought process here for why I want to go through all of this. Because it's a long chain, and there's a lot of math involved, and it's going to continue. <laughs> so sorry about that. It's really cool, though. It's, it's a neat process. So like we did with uh, carbon production, let's do the same calculations with algae. Now, making mineralized water is very easy, so I'm not even going to calculate that. Now, last time I built it in here, and this seems like a good as place of any. Problem is, is it's massive. Like, it it's going to take a huge amount of space to do this processing. So, we need to build somewhere where it's not going to compete with space at all. Right here might work, but it's going to compete with space, potentially, of these ore sorters if they ever expand outwards. We can't put it here, because that's getting really close to the belt. I almost have to go to the map view. <laughs> I can't zoom out anymore. Like, it's going to have to be on the outskirts of the factory. We can't put it here because it gets in the way of these expansions. Obviously, any of this won't work because it's just too big. So ultimately, I agree with my past self's choice to put it up here. Because there's nothing. There's steratite here, but we've never even run that before. So I'm not really worried about that expanding. This is all open countryside. This would be a great place to do it. All right, let's figure out the ratio. Before we figure out how much we want to produce, we need to figure out what the ratios are. And that'll give us a good idea of how much we need to produce. So but the second step, after we've made mineralized water, we need to make the green algae. And that grows in an algae farm. And this is a massive facility. And it's a very slow facility, so you need a lot of them. And also takes forever to construct, apparently. <laughs> there we go. Look how huge that thing is. It's like a, the size of a sorting facility. Boom. So carbon dioxide and mineralized water go in, which is also funny that we're producing carbon dioxide and consuming carbon dioxide at the same time. More on that later. That's going to require some special math. And the next step, I believe, is a liquefier. We need to turn those green algae is into something useful, cellulose fiber, and that's made in a liquefier. So 
So let's look at this. The algae farm runs at a speed of 0.75, and every 20 seconds it produces 40 green algae. So that's 2 algae per second on average, but it's only running at a speed of 0.75, so that's 1.5 algae per second that this thing's going to put out. The liquefier runs at a speed of 1.5, and consumes 10 algae every 3 seconds, which is 3.3 algae per second, but at a speed of 1.5, it needs 5 algae per second. If we have 3 liquefiers, that means we'll need 10 algae farms. So we need 9 more, and look how huge this is going to be. And we're out of stone bricks. Looks like we're running well on lots of things. Irons. I'll just pick up some more while we're waiting for the crafting. Okay, let's put these down. Doesn't matter where, because we're just using them as placeholders. Man, look at this. I don't even have enough room to slide them where I wanted them to be. Look at that. Wait, I like messed it up already. Whatever. They're just placeholders. Ten. <laughs> Look how huge that is. So the next step here is we need to turn our cellulose fibers into wood pellets. And that's just done in an assembler. There it is right there. So what are the output going to be of these three liquefiers? Well, it's going to be five fibers every three seconds which is 1.66 per second, but it runs at a speed of 1.5, and we have three of them. So 7.5 fibers per second are going to be coming out. That's how many we need to, uh, to consume. Each assembler consumes 12 fibers every 4 seconds, so 3 per second, but it runs at a speed of half, so 1.5 per second. So 7.5 divided by 1.5 is 5. So we need 5 assemblers. So far, so good. The last step is turning the wood pellets into carbon dioxide, and that's done in a liquefier. Let's put the liquefier down. Got to make sure we select the right recipe here. The one that is carbon dioxide through wood pellets. So how many wood pellets are we producing? Well, each assembler creates two pellets every four seconds. So that's half a pellet a second, but it runs at a speed of 0.5, and we have five of them. So in total, 1.25 pellets per second. The liquefier consumes one pellet every two seconds, so it consumes a half a pellet a second, but it runs at a speed of 1.5, so it consumes 0.75 pellets per second. Is there an easy ratio here? There kind of is. If we scale this whole factory up, this part above, by three, we're going to increase from 1.25 pellets a second to 3.75 pellets per second. Then, then that becomes divisible by 0.75 and means we would need a total of five liquefiers. So if this is copied three times and I won't make them, let's just theory craft this a second to see if this is just too crazy or it's something we want to produce. Let's get these trees kind of out of the way. I want to put them in the middle to signify they're their own entity. There we go. Let's set the recipe. Carbon dioxide. Now, to know if this is excessive or not, because we would need to copy this three times to power these, to know if this is excessive or not, we need to figure out how much carbon dioxide do we actually need. To know that, we're going to need to come back down to carbon production here and calculate the maximum amount of carbon dioxide per second that we're going to need. So this recipe 
to make carbon requires 35 carbon dioxide every two seconds, but it runs at a speed of 1.5, and we have eight of them. And that's 210 carbon dioxide a second. This isn't a great thing that they go through pipes and we don't need inserters for that. 210. Let's see how much we actually produce if we use this ratio that we've calculated thus far. To calculate it is not as straightforward as it looks because we're consuming carbon dioxide on the algae step in order to produce it. So we're going to have to siphon some of the carbon dioxide off of this. So first, let's figure out how much we would produce in total before taking into account how much we're going to consume. Each one of these is going to do 7 carbon dioxide every 2 seconds at a speed of 1.5, and we have 5 of them. That's 262.5 carbon dioxide a second. I'm going to write that down because that's a pretty specific number. It sounds like a lot. It's more than we need. But we haven't taken into account how much we would consume. So we're going to need to copy this setup three times to power these liquefiers. We have 10 machines here, so that means in total we're going to have 30. So how much would 30 algae machines require to grow green algae? Well, each machine needs 100 carbon dioxide every 20 seconds, but it runs at a speed of 0.75, and we have 30 of them which means we are going to need 112.5 carbon dioxide a second to power the machines in the first place. And if we subtract that from the gross total carbon dioxide production, 262.5 minus 112.5, our net result is 150 per second, which is not enough. There's also something to note about this. Because we have three copies of this, it means each one of these copies is producing 50 carbon dioxide a second. So that's kind of net carbon dioxide a second. That's an easy way to look at it. To produce the necessary 210, it means we're going to need five of these. Whether we want to scale this up anymore kind of depends on ratios, really. I don't know. I'm kind of having fun here, and I can already tell. I just know that this setup is going to be way different than what I did before. It's funny how when every time you play this game, you never do it the same way twice. At least when you're building it by hand, without robots, or at least without blueprints. Because it's like the math is different every time. It's like you do the same math, but it turns out different every time. It's great. <laughs> I, mean, I guess it means I'm terrible at math. But yeah, if we expand this twice of what we see, so a total of 60... 60 of these giant machines then we'll have a total net output of 300 carbon dioxide a second 210 of which will be needed for carbon production sounds great let's go big i know i say don't go big <laughs> don't go big in the beginning of the game but this is a situation where i think it's okay <laughs> we are going to be saving a lot of coal use by producing all of this carbon dioxide the efficient way. So sorry if I bored you with all that math, but you don't want to get into building something this big without doing a little bit of math first. It's complicated stuff. But luckily we have robots. <laughs> robots are great. That's going to make building this easier. So the next step here, we kind of this is kind of a two-step process to build. First, we need to create this stamp here and then repeat it two more times and then attach these liquefiers and then copy everything and slam it down again. <laughs> so we've got some work in front of us. Now that we've got the ratios figured out, we can start figuring out where all the belts and inserters are going to go. And that's going to have to wait until the next episode. So I will see you later.